the waiter. Again, it's New Year's Eve today, and so we're gonna go feed some of the heifers that he had purchased for me in this group of cows, and we're gonna see how he does it. So it's pretty exciting. Let's go. So we pile our hay conveniently in pastures, so we don't have to haul as much hay out of the hay fields. So this hay was put up in this pasture, and then by doing that. We don't have to apply as much fertilizer because we're not taking all the all the organic material off. It gets put back on the same place that it was harvested from.
this red one here, P378, that would be one of my heifers. Um, P360 above, that would be one of mine. P376 would be one of mine right over here. P371, one of mine. So it's pretty cool. We're just gonna see the next chapter of their lives and they're all bred. They will be calving. So if you guys want to follow along for more of that, you have to go over to his channel and it's called Show Me the Good Life and you'll be able to see the next pages of all of the cattle. It's gonna be great, let's go! Okay, so everyone, I have some big announcement. This is Jordan, the manager of Adrian Farms. And so he has decided to do his own YouTube channel, which I want all of you to go over and follow and support. And you get to see the next chapter of the heifers that he buys for me. And you'll get to see the cows that I end up buying from him. And you get more of an in-depth behind the scenes of what goes on. So, meet Jordan. Hi, I'm new to this, of course, but I am the manager of Adrian Farms. And then I also run a small commercial operation of my own cattle. Raise horses, dogs, and kids. So come along, I guess, for the ride, and I guess we'll see what happens. I think so, it's exciting. I think it is. So can you tell me a little bit about the When did they cap? So these, they're AI'd for February 15th. Due date on the AIs, and then they're tagged. The heifers that are AI'd that are carrying the little marker tags is the yellows. We'll keep those back. Generally, we will sell our, our uh, cleanup side heifers as bred heifers or as pairs in the spring. We didn't keep as many back this year, so we're gonna probably retain those for the ranch. And then I've got uh, three different breeders that they're from, so we've raised some of these heifers. Of course, Darren had some, and then uh, there, there's another set that came from a place in Nebraska. So, it is, and I bought heifers again this year, but Karen's didn't make it down to Missouri this year. So. Not this year. So then, will I be able to purchase heifers again this year, or what's the plan for this year? So I think we'll sell a few, a few pairs in the spring. Uh, most of them are going to get retained. I think this cow market's going to get really, really good. We're trying to kind of build our inventory up with these cows. Uh, we run a spring and a fall herd here. Our fall herd has gotten almost too big, so we're trying to really grow our spring herd. As far as Adrian's plan, uh, my personal cattle, I don't, I don't particularly like a fall herd, so I just have spring cows on that side. Cool. So you're gonna show us your farm? Let's go. All right, let's go. So this is probably my favorite part of our friendship. Uh, Jordan and Jody purchased a piece of grass ground, and I'm really inspired by that because this is something that's very hard to do, and it has a lot of challenges that go into it. And so, tell me about your process. What happened? So we we always knew we wanted to buy ground, and uh, we originally from Nebraska, so moved here and. We kind of needed a place to put roots down, I guess is what you'd call it. And then we found another property and it fell through and this one came available. And it's a fixer upper project, but it's an, also an investment. So we're hoping with this, we can stair step our investment and grow and keep building as we uh, move forward with our plans. But so it's, it is 235 acres. And it's got a 15 acre lake in the back. so be a great property to build on in the future if we did do that but I think it'll probably be more of a stair step investment. So when I first bought my piece of ground mine was I didn't want anybody to have control over my future and what I was doing and renting you don't own and you still have to ask for permission and do all sorts of stuff. What was like the motive for you guys to buy? It's honestly the kids like I want to be able to have Wade grow up with something and grow up and, and have something of his own so that was our motivation and, and exactly what you said like renting is really hard it's easier in Missouri than it was in Nebraska like it, I've had more opportunities here than I had there but um, crop ground on your channel what are you what can we expect when we go to your channel so we actually are um, taking over the crop ground for Adrian this year we've leased that out in the past and had someone else farm it for us this year I took ownership of that or took took it on myself so we're going to do the row crop I'm it's going to be my crop deadering livestock's crop not Adrian's so that's going to be a new project that's new for me. I have worked for farmers, but I am not, not a row cropper by any means. So tractors and me usually don't get along. I think it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be exciting. It'll be fun. So your cow herd personally is different than Adrian's cow herd. 
it's it's different in the way that uh, I've I have a new cow herd. Adrian's herd has been Adrian's been around for 47 years. So the process that they used to do their cows is they would buy heifers and use terminal cross bulls. We've changed that dynamic quite a bit since I've been here. But my cows are we we got a loan for the cows because we bought ground and we rented ground. So I tried to buy as many cows as I could that were still of quality. So color really didn't matter to me. I spent more money on good black bulls to make make my calves uniform. But overall, the breeding scheme is the same as Adrian. We use the same type of breeds. Um, essentially, the colored cows, we're just trying to make them black, just like everybody else is. Oh, that's great. Cool. Let's see the rest of it. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> cows right all yeah. of these are your own personal cows mine or mom's adjusted okay so what kind of plan do you use for them what do you do now these are they get sim angus bulls or uh, balancer bulls for making a three-way type cross with stuff i did have some herford bulls to make some f1 baldies as well just make trying to make as many replacement efforts as we can for myself and adrian farms so the nine series heifers actually came from Adrian Farms. So any of the first digits on the nine came from Adrian that I purchased from the ranch. And so as we go forward, they'll get sorted based on their breed makeup on what pastures they go in. So the, all the baldies will go on balancer bulls, make three-way crosses. The reds will all go back on black Sam Angus heifers. And then the Herefords and stuff will see more black bulls trying to make everything black. Uh, and then of course, the straight black cows will get the Herefords. So my personal favorite thing about your herd is I like how you have it very family oriented. Like right away I can see that 000 is Wade's cow. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. Can you see that? Names all of them. But <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Who's yeah. the boss? <laughs> he he definitely picked her out. She cabbed last year. She came out and helped me tiger her. Yeah. She's, but it, all the, for some reason, Wade likes the Charlotte. So every Charlotte cow in here is, is Wade's if you let him play out this that way. <laughs> but we also have some registered cows in here that aren't marked any different, but the yellow tag cows are more than likely registered. And then we've got some some heifers in here as well that are that are Jerry Clay's. Very cool, I love it. So are we gonna feed them? Yep, let's feed. What are we giving them? It's half and half corn and dried and cold. So Get a cow on them, so we'll give them a little feed and get them up and make sure we don't have any problems. Hey, Jordan, can you tell me a little bit about what you're using to feed? Just 
the Mighty Handy box that we run a bar through so we picked up a bail bed. So. Was that a custom thing or did yeah, they come so, that way? No, we had to run the bar through it and weld it in ourselves. But it makes it handy so we can pick it up and set it off without using a skid steer. And then it's wired just right into the auxiliaries on, on a pickup on a toggle switch. So this truck's set up, but all the ranch trucks are set up so they can use the same feeders. Uh, and we've got this one and we've got three more smaller ones. This one gets used by the most. This old 2,500 pounds. Okay. So, are we talking about I was just going to say, I was like, talking through your process. So, we'll see. so we're going to start grinding. So, this is deer, pork, and beef. And what we're going to wow. do is just make props for New Year's Eve tonight. But it's salt cured. So it's been curing for five days. Put the seasoning on. So is this your own deer that you shot, or is this something else? Jody's buck that she shot, and then a calf that uh, we butchered ourselves on our ranch. Very cool. So for the hunters, they're probably going to be able to find a picture of her buck on your page, I'm assuming? Oh yeah, he'll be there. Very cool. Looks nice. <laughs> okay, keep it on. Where's your view of that? Yeah, but. It's over there. In the, try the, in the, yeah, that. Heather way! <laughs> Switch, grind it in a smaller. Okay, perfect. Second pass so we can stop. Where's that? So we just raise Border Collies, working stock dogs. So all these pups are registered pups out of a Josie female that I raised. Uh, that mom actually keeps for me, but she's kind of our brood female right now. That's our registered dog. And then I've got other pups from other breeders that we start and train to use on the ranch as well. So we're starting our Border Collie deal. It's just kind of getting off the ground. This is a, our first litter that we raised that are registered. I had a litter last year. Um, out of a bell dog of mine that I've raised. Okay, so I know you have a Facebook page right now that's called yeah. Littering Livestock that yeah. had the pups advertised before on. So are you 
gonna still use that page or are you gonna put everything on your YouTube and Instagram of the... No, the Dead or Dang Livestock page will still get used some for um, pups and colts and stuff that we see and, and advertise a little bit, but they'll for sure be on YouTube when we stock test them. And like these pups, she only had three pups this litter, so it's really easy to just keep them until they're nine, ten weeks of age. And... Sorry, gotta keep them entertained. Are just bow down. So the sheep are just here to see what the dogs are going to have for drive and work ethic and what they want to do on uh, for natural instinct. That's all it is. They don't have any any training. They're too too young to know anything else besides just go look and, and chase chase something. So we put these pups in here and we kind of see what they're going to act like, and then we we can make that decision if we want to continue training that dog for a ranch dog or if it's going to be more of a sheep dog you'll know in their personality traits if they really are aggressive they probably lean toward the cattle side if they're timid and have a lot of eye and, and they stock the livestock they're probably going to be more of a sheep dog or a smaller operations dog so we just try to do our best with them and, and we're going to put some other pups in here too today that i've i've not raised that i've purchased and we'll just see what happens okay cool well, let's get to it these sheep are fairly fresh, yeah. so they, they don't really like being around people, and they really don't like the dogs. The dog's a predator. So all I'm doing is teaching them that I'm base. So when they come to me, I'm safe, and they're not going to get bit by the dog. So when they run away from me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the dog bring them back to me down. Hey. This is a release, and so it's going to teach them so that way I can protect them. As we work these dogs and they get older, they're going to get more aggressive and they can be hard on stock. This way, if the sheep get behind me, I can keep the dogs off of them, and that's how we'll show them the directions that we want them. As we teach these pups their directions, we'll go come by, which is clockwise, and away to me is counterclockwise. And as you can sit here and stand with the sheep, you can kind of direct your puppies on a direction and give them a command, and that'll teach them with the commands as we do it so like i said you stay yeah. okay cool. I Yeah. Hello, oh, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. My main goal here is to spread awareness of my friend's new social media channel because I am an influencer and so I'm really excited for it to take off. I really think their family is awesome and they're gonna provide a lot of really cool content as you can see in that rather lengthy video. I'm sorry for the length, 
but there's just so much good stuff going on, I can't skip out. So you could really take a divey, a deep dive into the ranch life, and I think it's really cool what they do, and I think they're gonna have a really great, successful social media journey. So if you're here, please head on over to their channel. I have provided that down below in the link box, and it's Show Me The Good Life, and go give them a follow and support, because the ag industry needs it. And as always, go to femalefarmerrancher.com for more. Okay, I love you guys.